Morning everyone, trust you're all keeping well and keeping safe. This morning we're up to part four in our series called To Serve Jesus. Individuals who were chosen, found and called by Jesus and their lives give us some inspiring and challenging truths. I hope you, you would agree with me on that this morning. So okay then, today we'll be looking at Nathaniel or we could possibly say we'll be looking at Nathaniel Bartholomew. I say that because many scholars agree that they're, that they're the same person. Either way, uh, let's come at, the, at it from the point of view that they are the same person. Okay, the title of today's message and the first truth we find from the life of Nathaniel is this. Great things can be found in the strangest places. Great things can be found in the strangest places. If you have your Bibles... With you, please turn with me to John chapter 1. We'll be reading from verse 43 through to 51. It's the same reading as last week, but we're just going to read a bit further on. The scriptures say this. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. And Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about the, whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were under the fig tree, before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Let's just pray together. Father, we thank you. This morning, for the opportunity, once again, we have of being able to come and gather in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you would speak into our lives and minister to us as only you can. Above all else, Father, we pray that we would leave different than when we came in, because we've heard from you and we've been touched by you. We ask it, Father, in Jesus' name, for his glory. And we all said, Amen. Well, praise God. Once again, here we have an ordinary man called by Jesus to do extraordinary things in the power of God. We'd probably say that Nathaniel is probably best known for his words, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Well, as our title suggests, great things can be found in the strangest of places. But before we get to looking at that, I want us to see some incredible things about this man. Tradition tells us that he didn't just fade away. He didn't just fade away in the background. Tradition tells us he worked fearlessly and tirelessly for the gospel. Even though we don't read much about him, he can still teach us a great deal. And the first thing I would say is this, don't just fade away after Jesus has come into your life. Don't just fade away into the background in the kingdom of God. Let me put it another way, don't become an armchair follower. Don't sit at the back and just leave it to others. Nathaniel Bartholomew certainly didn't. Tradition tells us that he ministered in India. He went there preaching the gospel, sharing the good news of Jesus. It's also recorded that he went to Armenia and, and there he preached with great power. We're also told he died an incredibly painful death. Tradition tells us that he was flayed alive. Flayed alive means that he was uh, skinned, his skin was removed and then he was beaten to death. What an incredible challenge to us as we serve Jesus in our life. Rather than just fading into the background, we need to be open uh, to do what needs to be done to share the good news of Jesus. Okay then, let's get back to our texts. Let me say great things can often be found in the strangest of places throughout history every once in a while there are things that are on earth things that are found in the strangest 
of places that re reveal truth, things that I've found that tell us so much about our past. We've probably all heard about the, the Dead Sea Scrolls. They're a large collection of manuscripts, many of them being Old Testament books which date back to the first century in biblical scholarship terms. They were a great find. And, but when, where were they found? Well, in the mid-1930s, a, a shepherd boy was looking for lost sheep and in a valley near the Dead Sea. And the, the valley had many caves and the boy was throwing rocks into the caves, scaring out any sheep that were trying to hide there. And when he threw a stone into a certain cave, he heard a pot smash. On investigation, he found hundreds of sealed pots with manuscripts inside. And they became known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. The point I make is this, great things can come from the strangest of places. And in our reading, Nathaniel just can't believe what Philip is saying. Along comes Philip with the, with the great news that, that he's ever carried. We found the one Moses wrote about in the law, Jesus of Nazareth. And Nathaniel's response has never been forgotten. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Basically saying that's a strange place to, for the Messiah to come from. And here's our second truth this morning. Location doesn't dictate our vocation. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is this, just because you come or may come from the poorer part of town, just because you don't go to the best school, just because you haven't been to university, just because you aren't part of the yuppie crowd, just because you come from Barnsley, doesn't mean that you can't and you won't achieve great things for God in your life. Just because you come from a small village, just because you go to a small village church doesn't mean that you can't be in the forefront of all that God is wanting to do in our nation. Listen, our location has nothing to do with our potential because in Jesus we can come from nowhere. We can be sent somewhere and we can do something in the kingdom of God. Great things come and can come from the strangest of places. So why is Nathaniel so sceptical? Uh, it's because Nazareth wasn't considered a significant place. Nazareth was a relatively isolated village with a population of just a few hundred. It was a place of rel relative poverty. Not much going on, not much, good, not much is happening there. In such a place, there, there tended to be sickness and di disease spiritually. It was ins insignificant as well. Nazareth isn't mentioned in the Old Testament at all. There's no prophecy linking the Messiah with Galilee or Nazareth. It wasn't a place known for great minds or great abilities. Nothing was expected to come from this place. Can anything good come from such a place? So when Nathaniel gets up to follow Philip, he probably goes to the meeting not expecting very much, but how wrong he was. Let me say, never go anywhere thinking like that. Always go with an open mind and an open heart so that God can minister into your situation. And here, you can imagine Nathaniel's surprise when Jesus says, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me, Nathaniel? asked Jesus, answered, I saw you while you were under the fig tree before Philip called you. And Nathaniel probably thought, How in the world does, he, does this man know me? Let me read another scripture to us in Psalm 139, verses 7 through 10. Where can I go? Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I sit on the far side of the sea, even there, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. And that's the answer to the question. How do you know me? It's simply this. Jesus is God and he can see into all of your life. He can see into our hearts. He is omnipresent, omniscient and he is omnipotent. He, Jesus, is all-knowing, all-powerful and he is everywhere all of the time. And the truth we can learn from the family's experience is this. Jesus knows us well. Let me say, Jesus knows you well. 
He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows what you've been talking about today, yesterday and last week. He knows your deepest thoughts. He knows my deepest thoughts. He knows our personal faults. He knows our struggles. And he knows what makes us laugh. Bottom line, Jesus knows you. Jesus knows you. And he knows the plans he has for you. And those plans aren't dependent on where you live. They aren't dependent on your, your location, where you come from. Because Jesus can see what you can become. And under that fig tree, Jesus saw Nathaniel. He saw what he could become, even before Nathaniel did. Did you get that? We're not always the first to know what God is about to do in our lives. That can be for someone today. You might not be the first one to know what God is going to do in your life. And here's another thing to notice. When Jesus talked with Nathaniel, he could have said something like this. I know you, you're the, you're the one who thought that nothing good could come from Nazareth. Well, I'm sorry to birth your bosom, bu bubble, mate, but I'm here, the Son of God, God in the flesh. Don't you feel a bit stupid now then? But he didn't, did he? Jesus describes him as a man in whom there is nothing false. And falseness brings to mind to us a picture of deception and hypocrisy. And Nathaniel was neither. He was an incredible, that was an incredible compliment, a true Israelite in whom there was nothing false, especially when it comes from the mouth of God. But this isn't just a compliment, it's also an encouragement and it can be an encouragement for us today. All who would become followers, disciples of Jesus. Because the, many, the reality is many, if not all, of Jesus' followers were found in the strangest of places. And in these scriptures it's clearly a compliment to Nathaniel. Because in these days of Jesus, the fig tree symbolises fruitfulness and spiritual fullness. And when Jesus said, I saw you under the fig tree... He's pointing to the fact that Nathaniel was a man who desired a closer walk with God. Under the fig tree meant that you were in a place of reflection, a place of study, a place of meditation, a place where people opened their hearts to God, a place, a place where people brought their joys before God and their sorrows, their victories and their failures, their confidences and their doubts. How about us? How about you this morning? Are you under that fig tree? Are you bringing your thoughts? Are you bringing your needs? Are you bringing your joys before God? And as we close, let's remember that great things can be found in the strangest of places. And hear this, the Son of God, the Saviour of the world, was found in a strange place. And hear this, Nathaniel, the, the, the one in whom there was found no fault, was found in the strangest of places under a fig tree. He went from the fig tree to, the, to all the other, other most parts of the world. Remember this, location does not dictate our vocation. And with God, all things are possible for those who believe. Nathaniel believed. Do we, do you believe this morning, do you believe that something great can come from Darton, from New Lodge, from the surrounding area? Do we all understand that our location has nothing to do with what God can do in our lives? Let's be encouraged. Let's get ready to see what God can do in our lives. Let's be open to the truth that God can do anything at any time and anywhere because great things can come from the strangest of locations let's just pray together father we thank you today that your word to us brings encouragement that we father no matter where our location is no matter where we live father you can do great things in our lives as we give our lives to you we thank you today and we ask you, God, in Jesus' name, that you would use us to your glory, that we would see the name of Jesus lifted up, 
that we would see people coming from a lost eternity into your kingdom, that your church would grow, develop, that your church would be that light on a hill and we would see great things achieved in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory this morning. We love you and thank you, Father. We pray for those less fortunate than ourselves today. And we ask, Father, for our needs, whether they be physical, spiritual, or financial. We ask in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would meet our needs as we seek to serve Jesus, as we seek to walk the walk, as we seek to walk the, walk the pathway you've given to us, as we seek to share the love of God with others. Father, help us, lead us, guide us, direct us in all that we do. And we all said, Amen. Well, praise God. Have a great day. Amen.